To solve this question, we need to look through our answer choices and figure out which one has the highest value. Now this problem is going to be a bit tricky because all of our numerators are less than their denominators. So we can't use any comparisons to the whole number one to help us eliminate answer choices. We also can't get common denominators to compare these fractions because finding a common denominator between 20, 40, 70, and 6 is going to be very challenging. We also can't convert these to decimals very easily because again, I don't know what 1 20th, 1 40th, 1 70th could be in fraction form. So the easiest way to go about this problem is actually to get matching numerators, which we don't have to do very often. But it helps because we have this fraction here, which just has a 1 in its numerator. Whenever you have a fraction with 1 in the numerator, like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, you can fully compare their values by looking at their denominators. The smaller the denominator, the greater the value. So let's line up all of our fractions here. We've got 3 twentieths, 7 fortieths, 11 seventieths, and 1 sixth. We won't have to change anything about 1 sixth, but if we want the denominators to equal 1, excuse me, the numerators to equal 1, we will need to divide both the numerator and denominator by the value of the numerator. So if our numerator is 3, we're dividing the top and bottom by 3. If our numerator is 7, we're dividing the top and bottom by 7. If our numerator is 11, we're dividing by 11 in the top and bottom. What this is going to do is give us fractions with 1 in the numerator so we can compare their denominator. And all of these denominators are going to be decimals. And I know we normally don't like to put those in fractions, but this is just for comparison's sake. We're comparing these decimals to the number 6. So let's start with 20 divided by 3. We'll have 3 goes into 20. 3 cannot go into 2, but 3 can go into 20 six times. That's 18. We subtract. We're left with 2. Then 3 cannot go into 2. So we have to add a decimal and add a 0. And we can see that this is going to become a repeating process. So it's going to be 6.666 repeating. Now we can look at 40 and 7. How many times can 7 go into 40? 7 cannot go into 4. 7 can go into 40 five times. 7 times 5 is 35. We subtract and we're left with 5. Then we have to add a decimal, add a 0. And how close can we get to 50 without going over? That would be 7 times 7, which is 49. And we could continue from there, but I think 5.7 is enough for us to stop and keep going for the sake of time. Finally, let's look at 70 divided by 11. Eleven can go into seventy six times, and when we subtract, we're left with four. Eleven cannot go into four. We add a decimal, add a zero, and eleven can go into forty three times, which will give us thirty three. We subtract, and we keep going. But again, two decimal places is probably, or excuse me, one decimal place is enough for us to compare. So now. We need to look through, and we actually need to look for the smallest denominator, because remember, the smaller the denominator, the higher the value, and the higher value is what we want. So taking a look at our first digit, our whole number digit, the smallest number is actually 5, making 70 40ths our correct answer.